Edward did not think twice to humiliate Lydia, simply because of the color of her skin. These kinds of derogatory remarks in his teenage years were never corrected, but years later, they would cost his father's company dearly and finally made him regret his actions. It is because of you that we came second in the competition, Lydia. Your black face stands out like a sore thumb in our squad, and your moves are always over the top, typically like African Americans. If it wasn't for the school policy on race, you would never have made the squad. Lydia could not believe the arrogance of this young man. She tried to contain the flood of emotions that welled up in her, but simply could not stop the tears from flowing down her cheeks. This wasn't the first time that Edward was openly hostile and racist. Lydia loved to be part of the cheerleading squad, and she knew she was good. In the past, she had tried to report his behavior to the headmaster, but he never really did anything. Edward's father was the CEO of a famous pharmaceutical company and a huge sponsor of the school. Lydia was just another black girl with no money. Even worse than the way Edward spoke to her was the fact that nobody stood up for her. She never understood where this arrogant captain of the cheerleading squad got his power from. Nobody ever opposed him in any regard, even if he did horrible things. On the other hand, despite her own achievements and strong leadership, the school never acknowledged her. She didn't want to admit that there was a strong vibe of racial superiority in her school. But that day she finally had to face the truth. Her dad was at a loss for words when he picked her up outside the school gate. He was extremely upset to see his talented daughter in such a state and was ready to confront the group. However, Lydia pleaded with her father to respect her decision to walk away. She would finish the school year in this so-called prestigious institute, but after that she wanted to transfer to a school where she would be treated with the respect and dignity she deserved. The last few months in the school before the summer holidays were difficult. Her position in the cheerleading squad was quickly filled by a curvaceous blonde girl, ready to hang on to Edward's lips. Lydia mostly sat alone during lunch times, avoiding Edward's followers. She threw herself into her academics and finished the year with great results. After transferring to another school, life became much better and Lydia was able to put the bad taste of Gilmore High behind her. She did not take up cheerleading again, but started to participate in various other activities, finding out that she was actually multi-talented. Mr. Wentworth, her math teacher, discovered her strong aptitude for calculus and science and started working on bursary applications for her. Without financial aid, she would not be able to attend college, but he was sure she could win a great scholarship. The last two years of school flew by quickly. Lydia received a scholarship to attend Harvard and study biochemistry. She worked extremely hard and passed every year with flying colors. Her results opened up many opportunities to work for various influential companies, and in the end she was able to pick where she wanted to launch her career. Analytical chemistry sparked Lydia's interest, and soon her paths crossed with other scientists in the field of cancer research. It was clear that she understood some integrated secrets of her industry, and she found much satisfaction in trying to make a difference in the world. When Lydia received an invitation for an interview at a prestigious company, she could not believe her fortune. Never in a million years had she dreamt of getting such a huge opportunity at such a young age. The moment she walked into the company, the atmosphere made her feel uncomfortable. Brushing it off as nerves, she was escorted to an impressive boardroom with the most sophisticated furniture and equipment. It was clear that this company was highly successful. Lydia felt nervous and confident at the same time. While being introduced to all the board members, she kept eye contact with each one, showing her attentiveness and respect for people. As her glance moved to the third person in the room, her jaw almost dropped. Dressed in a fancy suit was a man she immediately recognized. Although his face had matured a little, there was no doubt that this was the same boy from her youth. So this is Edward Richardson. He is the chief financial officer at our company. Edward looked at Lydia with great confidence. He started rambling about the importance of his role in the company and how he did not tolerate any ill discipline when it came to financial matters. That's when she realized that Edward had no idea who she was. So how is it that a young black woman like yourself has achieved such rapid acceleration in her career? Your resume is quite impressive. Who's your father? A flood of emotions that Lydia thought she had completely processed came to the service, but she was a professional. She would not allow this man to dictate her behavior. My dad is a taxi driver. I studied with a bursary, and as you can see, achieved my degree at Harvard. 
where I am today came through dedication and hard work, and of course a passion for what I do. At that moment, a young black secretary entered the boardroom. She walked up to Edward and whispered something in his ear. Nobody expected the outburst that followed. Edward humiliated the young woman in front of everybody present. In no uncertain terms, he told her that she had screwed up, that she was an incompetent black girl and that she was fired. To try and salvage the situation, the chairperson of the interview apologized and asked for a 10-minute break. The break gave the vibrant black scientist a moment to recuperate and structure her thoughts, and when it ended, Lydia knew exactly what she had to do. When the interview resumed, the chairperson introduced himself as Mark Richardson. He asked a few additional questions and then announced that she was an excellent candidate for the research position in their company. She was given the chance to ask questions. When Lydia addressed the panel, her response surprised everybody in the room. Mr. Richardson, I do admire the work your company is doing in the field of cancer research. This is truly a passion of mine, and I would be honored to work with such an excellent team of scientists and researchers. However, I cannot see myself fitting into the culture of your company. Edward hasn't changed at all, and it is clear that you, as his father, do not have the guts to discipline him for his lack of manners. Moreover, I cannot work in a company where women, especially black ones, are not respected. She turned to a baffled Edward and looked him straight in the eye. It was clear that he was trying to figure out where this black woman knew him from. Edward, you once had the power to humiliate me. You treated me with disrespect just because of the color of my skin. Even today you don't see my worth as a person, but only the financial gain I could bring to your company. And this is why I will never work for you. She then introduced herself with her maiden name and watched on as Edward's eyes lit with understanding. His face became red with embarrassment. And his father immediately berated him for costing the company an employee as skilled as her. With most of the panel still confused, Lydia picked up her briefcase and exited the boardroom. As she walked off, she passed the desk where the black secretary was sitting, still teary-eyed. She said something to her and hugged her. Then the girl got up from behind her desk and followed behind Lydia. Never in a million years had she expected this day to become the moment she would finally let go. A day of triumph and self-worth instead of signing up for a prestigious job that would have looked pretty good on her CV. Lydia could see that Edward understood the full impact of what he had just cost the company and how displeased his father was with him. Clearly, he deeply regretted that his racial prejudice had been exposed. Whether he regretted being racist, she didn't know. But she also didn't care. Did Lydia do the right thing? Did she allow her emotions to ruin her career path? What do you think about this story that puts a spotlight on racism? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.